Hello. You know, it's very difficult for a girl to know what to pack when she's going away for the weekend. It's even more difficult when she's not a girl. <laughs> I am going to Paris for a secret fitting of a new gown designed by Monsieur Lonsoir, the great French fashion designer. Courtney's having a Lonsoir fashion show on Monday. And guess what? Courtney had one of the brightest ideas he's ever had. He is sending Julie along to Paris with me to chaperone me, just to see I don't flirt with the natives. With a chaperone like that, who needs natives? <laughs> now, you two, I cannot impress upon you enough how important it is for secrecy on this forthcoming trip. Monsieur Lonsoir's gown is going to set the fashion for the coming season. So watch out for fashion spies. France is notorious for that. Don't worry, David. We'll be careful. No one. But no one must see that gown before the fashion show. You do understand that, don't you, Timmy? I wish you to avoid publicity at all costs. And for this reason, I have booked you both into a small hotel on the outskirts of Paris. All right? Now then, the car is ready, so I suggest that you both get moving right away. All Bye, right? David. Goodbye. Uh, have fun. Uh, and be careful. Oh, and Timmy, watch out. Boys can be naughty in Paris. <laughs> I'm counting on it. <laughs> I wonder what she meant. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tim Blair. I used to be a nice, normal, clean-cut American kid. And then I met Julie Renfield, a young British actress visiting Hollywood. She turned my whole world upside down. But when the movie she was making ended and she returned to London, I was just about ready to die. To forget my broken heart, I posed for my photographer brother who needed some hippie pictures in a hurry. By mistake, they ended up in London. I really dig that earthy look. I want that girl. Look, it's my only chance to be with Julie. And that's how I became the ugliest girl in town. Ooh, oh, that fabulous face, the ugliest girl in town. Whose clothes are setting the pace, the ugliest girl in town. You don't have to be a Mia Sophia, this is the year of the <laughs> Mr. Courtney told me you were coming. It is an honor to welcome you. Oh, thank you. You're too kind. <laughs> I have reserved for you a discreet room on the fourth floor. Oh, good. And where is Miss Renfield's room? Uh, the same room as yourself. <laughs> we expect it, too. Oh, mademoiselle, this is the tourist season. We are very, very short of rooms. But uh, I thought you ladies wouldn't, would not mind sharing, as you are such good friends. <laughs> that good friends, we're not. <laughs> Still, if you would be good enough to share, just for the time being, when the honeymoon couple in room 43 leave, one of you may take that room. Fine. And when are they intending to check out? At midday last Tuesday. <laughs> hey, please come with me and I will show you to your room. Monsieur, but my mother told me never to go into alcoves with strange men. I am not a strange man, Mademoiselle. This creation is intended for you. Oh, then you, Monsieur. Oh, shh, shh, shh. We think you are <laughs> Excuse the secrecy, but the whole world is waiting for details of my new gown. Even the seamstress must wear a blindfold. <laughs> is it not beautiful? Oh, it really is gorgeous. But of course, you know why Brigitte Bardot does so many nude scenes. If she cannot have l'ensoir, then she prefers nothing. <laughs> oh, here is the box. Remember, please, to guard it with your life. I have another appointment. I must go. Now, bonjour, mademoiselle. Bonjour, mademoiselle. And remember, guard, guard it with, with your life. life. <laughs> I thought you were following me, madame. <laughs> oh, well, we thought you were following us. <laughs> 
I think you will be pleased, madame. I have chosen for you here one of our very best rooms. And uh, if mademoiselle wants something, please do not hesitate to call me. Mademoiselle. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> nice room? Yes, but there's only one bed. How many do you need? <laughs> ah, monsieur! <laughs> Here is an even more beautiful room with an even more comfortable bed. Voila! The bathtub? <laughs> And if there is anything else you should need, monsieur, please do not hesitate to call me. A blanket. <laughs> On the whole, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. <laughs> We found a dirty blanket and we were going to wash it. <laughs> the hotel will take care of that, mademoiselle. We didn't want to trouble anyone. Hmm. I think we should hide this. Do I think she saw it? You hide the box? I am going to dress for my Paris weekend. Now, wait a minute. I can't think where. Oh! <laughs> You just said I got a Carnaby Street? Mm. Salesman warned me only to wear it near people with sunglasses. Do you think you should wear that here? But David did say we shouldn't look conspicuous. As a girl, I work for David Courtney. As a boy, I'm in business for myself. Don't have you. Come to the hotel. I make you both rich. Mademoiselle Reinfeldt? Yes. Good. I am Claude René, reporter from the Paris Journal. <laughs> I understand you and Miss Timmy are staying here, so there must be a story for my readers. I'm sorry, I'm afraid there's no story. It's just a private visit. Oh, you are uh, just here shopping. That's right, we're just here shopping. Excellent! There is the story. The whole of France would want to know what the young English actress and famous model would buy in Paris. Uh, may I speak with Mademoiselle Timmy? She's not here. She's gone for a walk. Ah, very well. I wait for her. A good story is always worth waiting for. It's the radio that the people next door plays all the time. <laughs> Timmy said she was going to have her head on it near Maison Louis. On the Chancelier, see? Right. You might just catch her under the dryer. I'm sure she's pleased to talk to you. <laughs> Merci, mademoiselle. I'll go right away. <laughs> Who is that man? I don't know. I, I never saw him before in my life. <laughs> The faucet tissue she was leaking. I, I fix it, see? Why would a plumber be dressed in fancy clothes like that? Good question. Uh, I was at the masquerade ball, and the moment I heard of this emergency, I came straight away. <laughs> you call a leaking faucet an emergency? Quoi donc, naturellement. These things grow. We must take example from Niagara Falls and never let this happen again. I cannot stop to talk to you now. I have another emergency in the basement boiler. If I'm not downstairs in two minutes, the whole building will go up. Oh, I miss you. I miss you. 
has no tomb. That man may be an imposter. I will speak with the hotel manager. Charles de Gaulle. <laughs> oh, that was a tough one. Oh, you, you better be to me again in case he comes back. Right. Wouldn't it be a better idea to just get out of here? Darling, he's in the lobby talking to the manager. <sighs> what are we whispering for? <laughs> this is the Hotel Plama. Oui, monsieur. But don't you have one about this high? With wide pants and a flowered shirt with lace ruffles? No, monsieur. Uh, but if you want one, we will get one. <laughs> no bother. I think I have the answer. You found out who that man was. Ah, mademoiselle, you cannot fool an old French reporter. C'est le visage qu'il a trahi. It was the face that gave it away. Well, that's it then. See, si. your face told me that Frenchman was your lover. <laughs> it's a good story. Except that it's not true. I have taken his picture with this small Japanese camera. When it appears on the front page of my paper. Uh, uh, Julie, can I see you for a moment, dear? We'll be right back. <laughs> what do we do now? Oh, that's all either one of us needs, a nice, fat, juicy skin. All we have to do is explain who Pierre the Plumber really was. Do you remember what Courtney told us to look out for? Fashion spy. So Pierre the Plumber, alias Pierre the Fashion Spy, gives Rene his whole story. And he also gives us a watertight alibi. Not quite watertight enough. There's just one little hole. How do we explain Fashion Spies without mentioning we have the dress? We just get him to delay the story. And we have our weekend in Paris. Come on. Monsieur Rene, we have decided to tell you the whole truth. That's better. But it will be an exclusive story. Exclusive? C'est merveilleux. With one little condition. That you promise not to publish it or the picture for 48 hours till after the big London fashion show. What fashion show? L'Ansoir. L'Ansoir! Shh! We came to Paris for a secret fitting of Monsieur L'Ansoir's new creation. If you hadn't been here at the right time, who knows what that man might have done in order to make Miss Renfield tell everything. You probably saved me from a fate worse than death. Oh, it was nothing. <laughs> All in the line of duty. So that laws, what a great story. We bought a Claude René Saint Filmster, a famous model from Dangerous Fashion Spy. Could you make that ruthless? Even better, ruthless fashion spy. <laughs> remember, 48 hours till after the fashion show. Ah, merci, mademoiselle, merci mille fois. <laughs> Thank you, mademoiselle. I got rid of him. There's nothing like telling people the truth to confuse them. The truth? First a plumber, then a fashion spy. What will you be next? Just Timothy Blair. And if you have any doubts, let me dress the part to prove it to you. This is great. 
Russian spying is always front page stuff in Paris. But taking an actual picture of the men was sheer genius. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Allo, Dubois? Give the story of the cabinet minister's orgy. We couldn't get the picture. <laughs> We've got a better front page. I'm sending it down right now. Uh, for tonight? But I promised in 48 hours. Till the demoiselles are out of the country. By that time, this man could be out of the country, too. If he's caught because of our story, it would be great prestige for the Paris Journal. But I gave my word. I am a man of honor. Your honor? Or a thousand franc bonus? We must all make sacrifices. It's on the third floor. There's no sign of Charlie. Oui, André, but why la deux? How come we both have to come? Oh, that's you. That's a fine way to greet your sister. Oh, what is this mystery? What is this urgency? Have you seen the evening paper? No. Fashion spy after le soir gown in Paris Hotel. So? It is his hotel. So? So, if the man had stolen that gown, he'd be worth about a million francs by now. Give or take a few years in prison. You could get that gown by just walking into their room tonight. I'll leave the door open. A third of a million each. What do you say? <laughs> but I want the money as soon as the dress is sold. Not C'est formidable. Ten minutes ago we were broke. Now we got credit as trusting us for a third of a million. <laughs> what an escape today, mademoiselle. He's in the Paris news. That's why the gendarmes are here. Monsieur, merci. Mr. Curadan was asking me to smile. I wish I knew where that man was. They're offering 50,000 francs for information leading to his arrest. 50,000? He's no ordinary criminal. That reporter says he is completely ruthless. Me and my big mouth. Any ideas on what to do now? I've got to get back into that Timmy costume as soon as possible. There never was a better reason for hiding behind a woman's skirts. Get into this mess. That's my fault. I'm not ruthless. I'm brainless.
do is get the next plane back to London. <laughs> Settle for a carrier pigeon. It was going to get us there any faster. I better not leave this Carnaby Street suit lying around. It's a dead giveaway. Well, put it in the Lancois box, and then we can put the Lancois dress in with our own. Where would I be without you? I hope you'll never try and find out. <laughs> and book our plane ticket. I'll get a taxi. me right for dealing with relatives. Uh, may I have your attention, please? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, well, uh, this is the great day. In just a moment, uh, Timmy is going to give you, good ladies and gentlemen of the press here, a sneak preview of the fabulous new L'Ensoir gown. Yes, you can well be excited. All I can say until that precious moment is, uh, hold your breath. <laughs> Uh, will you excuse me for just a moment? Sweetie, that's lovely. It's quite dim now, you know, Bertha. <laughs> 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 oh, look at the girl. Oh, <laughs> Jill, I'll fix the neck, and then you can go out there. <laughs> this was stolen in France, then. What is it? Hmm? Lonsoir. We've got to come. Uh, yes, uh, of course. Uh, um, here you are. Uh, take this. No, thank you. Uh, of course. Uh, <laughs> trust me, see him out, for goodness sake. Uh, will you wait in the gust a moment? Uh, 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 just, uh, just got to, 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 to the... Uh, uh, just carry on, please. I just want to be a moment. It's just that uh, it's... Um, uh, why didn't you get back in there? Why didn't you tell me you'd had this Lonsoir gown stolen in France? But we didn't, you see, the floor was in for explanations. Now get out of that ridiculous creation and put on this Lonsoir at once. Oh, oh, waiting in there. Everybody's waiting. Now hurry, hurry. Hurry, please. And zip me. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for coming. So good of you. Marvelous, absolutely marvelous. Much appreciated. Really appreciated. What a reception. I've just never known anything like it. The greatest, absolutely the greatest we've ever had. Fantastic. Can't wait to see the face. Tomorrow. Even Lonsoir himself will be surprised. Yes, I'm sure he will be. <laughs> Timmy, what can I say to you? Don't crumple the outfit, will you? The man's a genius, a sheer genius. I must go and arrange for that photographic session. If there's anything you want, um, help yourself. Thank you, I will. Well, wait a minute. Have you heard what Courtney said? If there's anything I want, help myself. I think he meant the food. Well, since you're not sure, can I have the benefit of the doubt? Oh, I really enjoyed our stay in Paris. So did I. And I just thought of a really great reason for going back there again. What's that? A honeymoon. But I warn you, there's one thing I did this time that I'm not going to do the next time. Oh? Sleep in the bathtub. <laughs> 